everybody. Today what we're going to do is a, uh, we got an engine that we're assembling for a customer right now. This is a uh, uh, 455. Uh, it's punched 30 over, so it's actually 462 cubic inches. But anyhow, it's a good opportunity for us to show everybody how to adjust the valves. Uh, this has got a uh, hydraulic roller cam in it. We use uh, Johnson hydraulic roller lifters in the engine. Uh, we have uh, Harlan Sharp uh, 1.5 ratio rocker on this engine and we use trend push rods. So what we're going to do, um, we have a comp, comp cams cam in this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to show everybody how to find the base circle uh, of the camshaft so that you know where it has to be to start your adjustment. Also, I'm going to show you a couple other things. I wish we had a little bit more time. We could have done the, uh, showed you how we determine the ge geometry of the push rod length and everything too, but this engine we're not going to be able to show you that on. So we're just going to do, we're going to just show you the valve adjustment. But um, these are hydraulic lifters, so it's real easy and um, whenever uh, we go through this, we're going to go through it a couple of times so that you guys can get a good understanding of We're not going to do it one time, we'll do it through a couple of these. But there's some things you have to make sure of before you start, okay? First thing is make absolutely certain all your parts are clean. That's a, that's a very important part of this because even though they're brand new parts, you pull them out of the package, they got fuzz and debris and cardboard packing material or whatever. So every part that we take out, we scrub these things. We use mineral spirits if they're oily uh, and then we scrub them with soapy water and then we blow them all out and get them really good and clean. And once you do that, then you're ready to rock and roll to put this part of it together. So these have, <clears throat> these are a, a screw in stud head. Uh, these are number 64 cylinder heads, which from the factory are screw in studs. And what we're going to do is these are ARPs, uh, and, and I highly recommend that you put an ARP rocker stud in. And not a bottleneck, use a complete 7 16 stud. Uh, these are a lot stronger than the factory uh, rocker studs. And uh, with the extra spring pressure for the roller cam and everything, you want to make sure you get stability. So <clears throat> what you're going to do, and this is, we've already done that procedure, but you put all your rocker studs in with a little bit of oil, and all these get torqued to 65 foot-pounds. Make sure you torque them. And before you go through all the, what we're going to show you here, go around one more time just to make certain that you didn't miss one, because it's easy to do whenever you're screwing them in, and you might forget where you're at, or maybe your wife comes in, or, you know, I don't know, maybe you got a, a pain in the ass nephew, I don't know. But... <laughs> So anyway, make sure they're all torqued. And then once you get all your rocker studs torqued, now it's time to start assembling this thing. And what you want to do is you want to have a fresh can of oil because you're going to oil all your parts. Now these lifters, we've already done it, but we soak the lifters in oil, which uh, we have a, like a little plastic tub and we dump our, uh, uh, our break-in oil in that tub and then we'll soak those lifters in that and then we'll put those in the engine block. And then the next step is, is we're going to start putting the push rods in. And before you do that, we always, I mean, I know it's a overkill, but it's better safe than sorry. We take an oil can with uh, break-in oil in it, and we lubricate all the lifter cups, and we lubricate all the uh, push rod tips, and then put those in, and you want to squirt a little bit of oil in the guide plates. So as Luke's doing that, I'll explain all that to you. So grab that can of oil real quick, Luke. And so what we're going to do, you can leave lifters in there. Yeah. So what he's doing right now is we're just putting a little bit of oil in the uh, lifter cup. Go ahead and put it in all of them. That way you can get done with that part of it. And you're only just putting a little tiny squirt. You're not getting crazy with this. So all we want to do is make sure that they're not dry. Alright, so like we said, we made sure now with the push rods, you got to make sure you scrub those things and you blow out all the push rods. They get, the oil feeds from the lifter to the rocker arm. That's what oils a rocker arm in these engines. So you have to make sure that the hole down through the push rod is clean. doesn't have any cardboard debris or anything in it. I've had engines come in before and a rocker cup turns blue or melts the tip of a push rod. And it's because somebody didn't clean their push rods and there's debris in there. And we take it apart and I show the customer, oh, look at here, this is what happened. So make sure your push rod holes are all clear before you put, put them in the engine. So now the next step is, is we're going to go ahead and put all the push rods in, Luke.
Again, what we're doing is we're just making sure everything's got oil on it. Now these are a uh, trend push rod, and we've already predetermined what the length needs to be on this particular engine. Uh, this thing with how much we uh, milled the block and how much we took off the cylinder head, these push rods ended up being 8725. 8750 would have been ideal, but right now we can't get parts, so we had to settle for an 8725 uh, length. <clears throat> They're 5 sixteenths 080 wall. And these are a chrome molly push rod, so they're hardened and they, so that you can run them with a guide plate. You have to make sure you get hardened push rods for guide plates. Leave the, the valley cover off. It's not a big deal. Do this step before you put the valley cover and intake on. We've done it before with the engine all assembled, you know, because we do it so much. And I'm going to show you how, how we determine where we uh, set the uh, lifter at so you can make sure you get the push rod or the uh, adjustment correct on the rocker arm. All right, so now he's got all the push rods in there. So now he's got the oil can. What we're going to do is just squirt a little bit of oil on all the push rod uh, where the guide plates are there. Just so that, you know, there's, it's not dry. It's got a little bit of friction. Put a little on the tips of the or, uh, push rod. And then once he's done with that, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll put a little bit on the uh, tips of the valves too. Cleanliness in oil is your friend, so make sure you keep everything clean. Make sure all your tools and everything are laid out. They're clean so your hands don't get dirty whenever you're assembling something like this. You don't want any debris getting it or oil or, uh, I shouldn't say oil, any dirt or <clears throat> anything like that getting in your engine. So you want to make sure your hands are clean, your parts are clean, and your work area is clean. Now we've already got two rockers on there already, so um, just just for the picture, it's no big deal. They're already adjusted, but we're going to uh, show you guys how to do these. Them, them two are already done. All right, so now the next step is, is we're going <clears> to, <throat> you can, you can put all the rocker arms on right now if you want to. That's usually how we do it. You don't have to. And the reason that I say you don't have to is because if you look down inside the engine here, these lobes, whenever it comes around, it's got the lifter coming out of the lifter bore, which makes the push rod stick up a little bit. So you may not be able to get the rocker on there and get the nut on the rocker arm uh, all the way. And then whenever you turn it over to put the next one or adjust the next valve, then what happens is it gets a lot of slop in it, and sometimes the rocker will fall off on that. You may not see it, and it'll catch. It'll bend your push rod, and you don't want to do that. So you can do one at a time, and that's how we're going to show you how to do it today. So go ahead, Luke, and we'll uh, let's do this side over here first. So make sure you're on the heel of your cam. Now this one's already on there. He he didn't show us how to rotate the engine over, but you can see down in here, these this is the heel of the cam. This is the lobe. You want it on the heel, which is the lowest point of the camshaft. This is a 1-5 ratio Harlan Sharp roller rocker. And it's a full roller, and how you can tell a full roller is the trunnion also has roller needle bearings in it, and the tip on the rocker is a roller. So what you're going to do, hopefully all your parts are nice and clean and everything works the way it's supposed to. You see how easy it is to turn that nut? So what you're going to do is you're going to turn that nut down, and you know that it's on the heel of the cam. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to take the slop out. All right, and an easy way to do that is just grab the end of the rocker arm like this, okay? See how it moves up and down? And as you're screwing that down, the lash is going to go away. And when it, when it comes to zero lash, you're going to feel it. The nut stops, okay? Don't go any further because now you're getting to the point where you have to adjust this. These are hydraulic lifters. This is a Johnson uh, lifter, and it requires a half a turn of preload. So what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to put a half a load preload on the half a turn, which is if you have the wrench on here, it's going to go from here over to here. 
from 6 o'clock to noon. Or you can go from noon to 6 o'clock, whichever way you like to do it. doesn't matter. Or you can go from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I don't care how you do it. You're only going to go 180 degrees. You're not going to go a complete 360 turn. And then once you get that set, go ahead and do that real quick on whichever one you're going to do it on. That's a quarter, that's a half. All right, so he went from over here all the way around to a quarter, all the way to half. Then you're going to turn your set screw down. You're going to lock that thing down. Oh, nope, nope, nope. You did that wrong. Loosen that back up. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to turn it a half a turn. How come that got so tight? So we're going to go a half a turn. All right, now lock that set screw down. I leave it a little bit short of half a turn because what you're going to do, you're not going to be able to get it real tight. So you're going to snug that up just a little bit whenever you, with the uh, wrench. That way you know that that rocker nut won't come loose. All right, go ahead and do the next one. It's a zero lash right now, so you're going to add a half a turn to it. Leave it a little bit shy, there you go, and then tighten your shut screw up. And then go ahead and finish the, there you go, perfect. That's exactly how you do that. Now these are both set, they're done, ready to rock and roll. And everybody says, oh, you need to readjust your lifters after you get it running. You don't have to do that if they're adjusted properly the first time. Um, so if you don't have it on the heel of the camshaft, sometimes you'll get a little bit of slop in there. and You might get a, lot, a noisy lifter and you have to go back to them again. but. If you have it on in the proper location, everything's set the way it's supposed to be, you're going to be good to go. You won't have to worry about that. Another thing you want to do, too, we, we do it ahead of time, but this is just kind of a double check kind of a thing. Take your push rod and just spin it with your fingers, okay? And then watch your rocker arm up here, because if you have a bent push rod, what's going to happen is, is your rocker arm is going to move back and forth. Or it won't even turn. Sometimes the push rod's bent so bad that it, it, it won't even turn. But it, just watch your rocker arm and make sure that it doesn't move back and forth because if the push rod's bent, what it's doing is moving the rocker arm around. All right, Luke, go ahead and rotate the engine over and set this on the heel for these. And you don't have to go in any certain order. We just start here and go all the way down. There's no reason for you to... Now, with a hydraulic flat tap at cam, uh, we used to try to do it in the firing order only because you got lube on the camshaft and it's wiping it off as you go. With these hydraulic rollers, or any roller cam for that matter, you don't have to worry about wiping the lube off. It's pretty simple once you know how to do it. You know, it's, uh, a lot of guys freak out about doing this, but it's really not that difficult. like anything. Once you know how to do it, it's easy. <laughs> Until you know how to do it, it's hard. So one other thing that we do too, once even though we oil all the parts as we're putting them together, again, you can never have too much oil. So uh, once a Luke has all these rockers on and adjusted. We'll go back through again and we'll take a wrench and just bump them just to make sure they're all tight and we didn't miss one. Uh, and it's real easy to do. The other thing we'll do too is we'll take and squirt a little bit of oil in every one of these rockers just to make sure that they're not dry. Now, if you can see, it's on the heel of the cam in here. And sometimes, depending on how big your camshaft is, you have a lot of overlap on the cam. You may have to do one and then turn the engine over a little bit more and do the other one. This is the fun part. All brand new pieces, parts. 
Luke, whenever he first started here, he's my nephew, and uh, we've been teaching him how to build engines. He's doing a good job. Um, but anyhow, when he first started here, all I want to do is build on the engines, Uncle Don. Well, he didn't realize that the dirty part comes first. <laughs> he just wanted the pretty part. <laughs> well, we all want the pretty part. It's <laughs> the fun part, like you said. Uh, absolutely, this is the fun part. This is where we had the most fun. Get to put pieces parts together. And we're going to do other videos too. I'm going to show you how to degree camshafts. I'm going to show you how to find top dead center. We're going to show you how to do valve train geometry to set it up properly so that the, you, ideally what you want is a roller tip uh, on the rocker to ro run right in the center of the valve. We're going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, we're going to do rear main seal installs. We're going to do, um, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to do um, piston ring gapping. There's a lot of, of uh, videos that we're going to do. Um, my son's been busy at work. He's had a uh, heavy workload, so we haven't been able to do quite as many uh, videos as we want to right now. But uh, I think he's getting freed up again a little bit, so hopefully we can start doing some more of these. All right, so whenever we rotate this over, when he rotates the engine over, I want you to watch these rocker arms, okay? Obviously, this is on the lift of the cam, and this one here on, on the heel. Oops! <laughs> now it just went on. It's going rolling over, and it's coming down on the heel. And that's where you want to be whenever you're setting your rocker arms. You do not want to be on that lobe because it, you're not going to be able to set the thing properly that way. Even if it's on that lobe just a tiny little bit, it can affect the lash. Obviously, uh, both valves have to be closed at the same time to build compression and uh, uh, produce power. So you can rotate the cam over so both of these are on the heel at the same time. Something we're going to do in our podcast too. So you want to make sure and uh, tune into our podcast every Wednesday night uh, from 7 to 8 p.m. on uh, DCI. Motorsports 1111 channel. Uh, one of the things we're going to discuss is uh, camshaft overlap. Uh, today is uh, October, what, 16th, 17th? I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, maybe 18th? <laughs> 18th, okay, we're October 18th today. We have a podcast today uh, from 7 to 8 p.m. We're just getting this video in real quick before we do our podcast tonight. Now this isn't rocket science. You don't have to freak out if it's not exactly half a turn. If you're off of a sixteenth of a turn, it is not going to hurt anything. Tight or loose, it's not going to affect the engine in any way. I like to try to make them all half turn. I'm a perfectionist. I want them all the same. So, all right, guys. Well, that's pretty much how we do this. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not real tough. Just make sure that you got it on the heel of the cam and uh, take all the slop out with your fingers. Don't do it with a wrench. Make sure that uh, the rocker doesn't move up and down when, and with tightening up the nut. And then once the lash is all gone, then you do a half a turn. Leave it a little bit shy of a half a turn. Set your screw or set screw and then bump it a little bit more with the wrench. And then give me that wrench real quick for me. So then what I do is, is once, once we get on through all these rockers, then at the end, I just kind of do this real quick. That way you know for sure you didn't miss anything. It's real easy to do. It only takes a second, and then it <clears throat> confirms in your mind that everything's done correctly. Very good. All right, we've got one more side. We're going to leave Luke alone let him finish this engine all up, but uh, that's how we do uh, valve uh, setting or valve adjustment on the... Uh, adjustable rockers. DCI Motorsports Ultimate Ram Air 5 cylinder heads. We have made uh, several improvements over the factory uh, cylinder head. We've raised the in exhaust ports, we've raised the intake ports, we improved the combustion chamber, 
and spark plug location for better flame front. Uh, we offer these things in a uh, as cast version, which is 380 CFM. We also offer them in a uh, street and strip CNC ported version of uh, 430 CFM. And we also have a race port, which is 500 plus CFM. And it is also CNC ported.